With all the talk of the LaFerrari hybrid hypercar and the new 488 GTB, it would be easy to forget that Ferrari has been rejuvenating its entry-level model. And the result? This rather handsome California T. That's T for turbocharged. Ferrari having ditched the old 4.3 litre engine in favour of a 3.9 litre V8 with not one but two twin scroll turbos. The result is a 70 brake horsepower increase in power to 552 brake horsepower. With improvements in fuel economy and emissions, Ferrari says it will do 27 miles per gallon but I don't think it's taken my heavy right foot into those calculations. Before we fire her up, it's worth explaining a few things about this interior. It's been subtly upgraded over the previous generation California, and as with other Ferrari models, the steering wheel holds host to a series of buttons. For example, you've got the windscreen wipers there, indicators there. Ahead of me is a big, bold rev counter that red lines at 7,500 RPM, and behind the wheel are these F1-style paddle shifts. Sets quite a scene, I think you'll agree. We should also mention that the California has a pair of rear seats, although they are a little on the small side, even for your five foot four and a half presenter with a terrible cold. The boot, however, is big enough for a couple of small bags. Right, let's talk performance. The California T can get to 60 in just 3.6 seconds and tops out at 196 miles per hour. So it's seriously quick, but it's actually the way the power, or rather the torque, is delivered that's interesting. You see, Ferrari wanted this turbocharged engine to retain the character of a high revving V8. And so it actually restricts torque in the lower gears to let the revs build more naturally. Only when you get into seventh gear do you get the full 557 foot-pounds. The aim being that this feels like a proper GT car at speed. It's a clever idea because while the California never feels anything other than turbocharged, you can savour the engine through the rev range and it sounds pretty good too. If I have any criticism at all, it's that the steering is a little bit too light and fast, which does mean that you sometimes find yourself overturning, going into corners. However, you do get used to that with time. A glowing credential of this car, though, is this superb grip. Ferrari's traction control and limited slip diff mean you can go through corners at a pace that is sure to put a smile on your face. The folding hardtop is actually the only body panel carried over from the old California and operates in 20 seconds. Although you can't operate it when the car's moving like you can with some other convertibles. Being a grand tourer, it's essential that the California's occupants are well sheltered from the wind, which they are for the best part, and that the suspension is not too firm which it manages to achieve despite having great handling. Now, the idea of using a Ferrari as your everyday transport might seem unlikely. However, that's exactly what the company says most California owners will be doing, many of whom are new to the brand. So the fact it's not as flash and extrovert as a 458 Italia is actually a good thing. This isn't a car that you would smoke around a motor racing circuit. You could use it very much in the same way that you would use an Aston Martin or a Bentley Continental GT Speed. In that sense, it's a much better proposition than the model it replaces. In fact, you could go as far to say the new California fulfills its brief to a T. For more puns like that, subscribe to the Telegraph Cars YouTube channel by clicking here. And to read in-depth reviews of other new cars on the market, go to the Telegraph Cars website by clicking here.